will be love lifted me love lifted me 261 261 love lifted me and we'll do first and third verses first and third let us all sing I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry, and from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me, oh, when nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, and when nothing else could help, love Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. And he's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. And he your savior wants to be. Be saved today. Love lifted me. Love lifted me, and when nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, and when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Let the church say amen. amen. Will you please bow with me as we go to the Heavenly Father. Dear kind and most gracious Heavenly Father, the one who sits high and looks low, the one that knows our every thought and our every deed, Father, we appeal to you now that you would watch over us and guide us and that this service here today rendered to you will be, we come before you as a sweet smelling savior. We ask your blessing upon all those who is our duty and we are bound to pray for, especially the members of the household of faith. We want to be mindful of all those on the sick list. We want to be mindful of Sister Crawford, Brother Leach, Sister Jenkins, Sister Azalee, all of those, Father, who stand in need of your healing. If it be your will, we pray that you would restore them to their much wanted and needed help. We want you to look in today, Father, on the man of the hour to speak to us from your words of truth. We know that it's able to save our very soul if we would just adhere to it. We're asking your blessings upon him and his family. Asking your blessings upon the assistant minister and his family. We want you to ask your blessings upon each and every one under the sound of my voice in a special way in which you know that they stand most in need of. We're asking your heavenly father to be with us throughout this worship service. Father, we're praying, no doubt, in the name of your son, Jesus, for these things to transpire. 
we submit this prayer in his holy name. Let us all say amen. amen. Our next election will be page 650, Salvation Has Been Brought Down. 650, Salvation Has Been Brought Down. Go ye into all the world and preach, Mark 16, 15 and 16. If you have it, let us sing. Jesus gave his life a ransom, yonder on Calvary, on Mount Calvary. Cruel cavalry paved the way by blood that we might win a bright shining crown. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down. Go and shout and tell it the world around. Tell it today. Tell it today. Preach the word of God that we might win a crown. Tell the lost salvation is full and free. Spread the news all over the land and sea. Tell it afar. Tell it afar. Praise the Lord, salvation has been brought down. All alone without a friend, he suffered to pay it all. Yes, he paid it all. My Jesus paid it all. In his blessed promises, sweet victory can be found. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, salvation has been brought down. Go and shout and tell it the world around. Tell it today. Tell it today. Preach the word of God that we might win a crown. Tell the lost. Salvation is full and free. Spread the news all over the land and sea. Tell it afar. Tell it afar. Praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down. There's a blessed home prepared way over in glory land, in bright glory land, blessed glory land. I have trusted in his love and now I'm heaven bound. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down. Go and shout and tell it the world around. Tell it today. Tell it today. Preach the word of God that we might win a crown. Tell the lost. Salvation is full and free. Spread the news all over the land and sea. Tell it afar. Tell it afar. Praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down. Our next election would be page 345, 345. When the roll is called up yonder, that there should be time no longer. Revelations 10 and 6. 345. If you have it, 
Let us sing. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, earth time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saith of earth shall gather over on the other shore. And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and glorious morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to the home beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll it's called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn to setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all his life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. We've come down to that portion of service, which is communion. We find in Luke 22, beginning at verse 19, and it reads as follows. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you. Let us pray. O Heavenly Father. We're thankful for you sending us your son. We're thanking you that he showed us how to make things right between you and man, showing us the way that we need to live and need to behave in or, as we strive for the goal for the everlasting life. As we partake in communion this morning, we ask that you help us or remind us of the time that Jesus gave his life so that we may live, the suffering that he went through to uh, wipe away the sins of man. We ask that you... Have, keep that in the back of our minds and that we never forget this. In this we pray in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Let the church say, amen. amen. First we take the bread. And now the cup. Amen. <clears throat> We're going to sing number 646. Six, four, six. Let us together sing. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And in a little light from heaven filled my soul. You know it made my heart in love and wrote my name above. How just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. I'll let us have a little talk with Jesus. Us tell him all about our troubles. We'll hear our faintest cry and serve by and by. Feel a little prayerful yearning. Heart unto heaven is turning. 
Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my path seems drear without a ray of cheer. And then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day. Hey, you know the mist of sin may rise and hide the starry skies. But just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry, answer by and by. Fill the prayerful yearning, heart unto heaven is turning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now I may have doubts and fear, my eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. You know I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus clicks it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry. Answer by and by. Feel a little prayerful yearning. Heart unto heaven is turning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it This is also the time for giving back, giving back to what God has blessed us with. We find in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, beginning at verse, verse 1. Now concerning the collection of the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do so also. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be no collections when I come. Let us pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the money we're about to receive here this morning. We pray that this money is spent, to, spent wisely toward the upkeep of thy kingdom and for bringing lost souls into your kingdom. In this we pray in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Let the church say amen. amen. For those of you who did not deposit your tidings into the basket before you entered the auditorium this morning, you have the opportunity to do so now. If you please raise your hands, one of the brothers will be around to collect that from you. Also, as always, you also have the opportunity to give it online at www.mapleavclc.org. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me, leads me safely through the sinking sand. It is the Christ of Calvary. This would be my prayer, dear Lord, each day to help me do the best I can for I need thy light to guide me day and night blessed Jesus hold my hand blessed Jesus hold my hand yes I need thee every hour through this land this pilgrim land by thy Saving power, hear my plea, my feeble plea. Oh, oh, Lord, dear Lord, look down on me. When I kneel in prayer, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Let me travel in the light divine that I may see the blessed way. Keep me that I may be holy and sing redemption song someday. 
I will be a soldier brave and true and ever firmly take a stand. As I onward go and daily meet the foe, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Yes, I need thee every hour. Through this land, this pilgrim land, by thy saving power, hear my plea, my feeble plea. Oh, oh Lord, dear Lord, look down on me. When I kneel in prayer, blessed Jesus, Hold my hand when I wander through the valley, dim toward the setting of the sun. Lead me safely to a land of rest. If I a crown of life have won, I have put my faith in thee, dear Lord, that I may reach the golden strand. No other friend on whom I can depend. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Yes, I need thee. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Let the church say amen. Y'all sound like y'all want to worship this morning. Amen. A friend like you. Number 205. A friend like you. This life is filled with sorrow and troubles here below. And we all are made to wonder just why it should be so. In every tribulation this life must bring to view. Oh Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh Lord, we need a friend upon this old weary road. We need someone to guide and share our old heavy load. We need someone to love and tell us oh, what to do. Oh Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh Lord, we know you traveled the road to Jericho, and you help the lonely pilgrim, for the Bible tells me so. When your earthly friend forsake us, and all the world seem blue, oh Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh Lord, we need a friend up on this old weary road. We need someone to guide and share our old heavy load. We need someone to love and tell us oh, what to do. Oh Lord, we need a friend like you. Now they say that many trials will come to vex the soul. And the clouds will often gather 
took them for us to go in every sad condition to lead us safely through. Oh Lord, we need a friend like you. Oh Lord, we need a friend upon this old weary road. We need some who want to guide and share our heavy load. We need some who want to love and tell us oh what to do oh lord we need a friend like you oh lord we need a friend upon this weary road we need someone to guide and share our heavy load we need someone to love and tell us what to do oh lord we need a friend like you amen amen thank god for one more chance to gather together to worship him to honor him to thank him to show him how appreciative that we are for the blessings that he so richly bestows upon us. I hope you came in with the Lord on your mind this morning. I hope you came in saying in intent to worship him this day. Amen. To let him know he is our God. And we love him because of who he is. He is great. And he's greatly to be praised. Amen. Help me this morning. I will bless the Lord. At all, times. At all times, his praise, his praise shall, continually be in my mouth. shall continually be in my mouth. My soul, my soul shall, make her boast in the Lord. shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof, the humble shall hear thereof. And, be and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us, let us, let us exalt his name together. Amen. As I journey through this land, singing as I go, pointing soul to Calvary through the crimson flow, many arrows pierce my soul from without within but my Lord leads me on and through him I must swing well and oh I want to see him and look upon his face when over there we're gonna sing for it. We'll sing it of His saving. Well, and on the street of glory, yes. Let me live my voice. All of my cares, I'll be home and last. service for my Lord. I know dark may be the night, but I cling more close to him. I know he will give me light. You know that Satan snares may vex my soul. Turn my thoughts aside, but my Lord, he just goes ahead and leaves what be tied. You know that, oh, I want 
to see my Jesus and look upon it face. We're over there. We're going to sing for him. Oh, sing it of his same. Oh, you know that on the street of glory is. Let me lift up my voice, all of my care, and I'll be home at last and ever, ever. Jesus and look upon his face. We're over there. Gonna sing for him. Oh, sing it of his same. Oh, you know that on the street of glory is. Yeah. Just wanna lift up my voice. All of my cares will be past cause I'll be home at last and I ever, ever sing it one more time. I said, oh, I want to see my Jesus and the Lord upon his face when over there on to sing forever. Keep singing of it, sing. Oh, you know that on the street of glory, yes. Let me live my voice, all of my cares. Thank God I'm home at last and I ever to rejoice. Amen. Amen. This morning, our study will be taken from the book of Romans. The chapter is 8. And we will be starting at verse 31 and read through and including verse 39. Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. And if you go there, you will find these words. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he, not with him also, freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness? or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. Uh -huh. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Uh -huh. Nay, in all things, all these things, we are more than conquerors yeah. through him that loved us. Right. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, 
nor things to come, right. neither height, nor death, right. nor any other creature right. shall be able to separate us from the love of God, right. which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Uh, we could just extend the invitation and go home off of that. Right. Amen. We are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Uh -huh. Paul says in verse 31, what shall we say then to these things? Right. What things? In the previous chapters, he talked about a lot of things. He talked about the fact that we, are, we who are in Christ are not condemned. He talked about the fact that the present suffering will in no ways compare to our coming glory. Right. He talked about the fact that we are spiritual and walk after the spirit and not the flesh. Come on. He says after these things, what things? The fact that all things work together for good uh -huh. to them that love God. What things? The fact that the Spirit intercedes for us with, our, with groanings which cannot be uttered in our prayers. What things? The fact that we have been adopted into the family of God. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. What things? Man. After all these things, he, he says the fact that whom he called, he justified. Who he justifies, he glorifies. With all this evidence, the natural, logical, rightful conclusion is that if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Our battles appear to be against flesh and blood. But the Bible tells us that it's not. Uh -huh. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse numbers 10 and 10 through 12. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not. Listen to the apostle. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, right. against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness right. in high places. So if God is for us, uh -huh. who can be uh, against us? Right. Listen to Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, the New International Version reads like this. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness right. through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Right. Whatever we need for life and godliness, right. Peter says God has already given it to us. Uh -huh. When we know that, our faith ought to be strengthened. If I have any faith at all, it can and needs to be strengthened. I don't know what you faced or overcome. I don't know where you are right now. I don't know where you're going to be tomorrow. But I do know if we as children of the most high king, if we're going to walk by faith, our faith must be strengthened. That's right. Satan is good at his job, yeah, he is. sending things to distract you, sending things to interrupt you, sending things to get you off point. But God tells us that through the Holy Spirit, that if he's on our side, right. who can be against us? Right. I want you to look at an example of the faith of God's servants at work. In First Chronicles, 
chapter 19, verses 1 through 5. Listen to what happened in this episode. It came to pass after this that Nahash, the king of Ammon, died, and his son reigned in his stead. And David said, I will show kindness unto Hanan, the son of Nahash, because his father showed kindness to me. And David sent messengers to comfort him concerning his father. So the servants of David came into the land of the children of Ammon to Hanan to comfort him. But the princes of the children of Ammon said to Hanan, Thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father, that he hath sent comforters unto thee? <coughs> are not his servants, <coughs> excuse me, are not his servants come unto thee for to search and to overthrow and to spy out the land? Wherefore, Hanan took David's servants and shaved them and cut off their garments in the midst, hard by their buttocks, and sent them away. Then there went certain and told David how the men were served. Mm -hmm. And he sent to meet them, for the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown, and then return. David is doing a good thing. Right? He sent words to comfort this young man at the death of his father. He said, his father was kind to me. So I'm going to be kind to him. But then Satan sent some instigators and said, you know they didn't come here for that, right? You know they just want to spy out the land and see what's going on here. You know they really didn't come to comfort you. And the Bible said they humiliated the servants of David, shaved their beards off and cut their clothes off and oh, exposed their nakedness even after doing the honorable thing. David's motives were misinterpreted. And I need to tell you, church, there are going to be times when your intentions are not properly received. I'm glad the Hebrew writer addresses this in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. He said, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, That's right. piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God can pull back the cover and show exactly what your motivation is. David attempted to show kindness to the son of his ally. <laughs> And his deed was seen as a scheme to spy out the weakness of the Ammonites. It seems even when you attempt to do good, someone will always attach an evil motive to your good deed. Too often, good deeds go undone because of what somebody else might think. Too often, we worry about what somebody else might say instead of wondering what God might say. This type of thinking indicates you care more about what others say than what God says. See, evil is hidden from man by those who forget that God sees it all. Things are done in secret to hide them from man. But we fail to realize that everything is open to God. That's right. Only by fearing God and not man can we be obedient to his commands. When Saul 
pursued David and was discovered unprotected in a cave, David didn't fear what others would say. He feared what God would say. When Daniel was threatened with death for praying to God, he didn't fear what others would say if he, did, if he prayed. He feared what God would say if he didn't. Peter and John were arrested for preaching to Christ and commanded not to do so anymore. But they feared not what man would do. They feared what God would do. I think we've got to readjust our focus to say, am I pleasing God? If we were more concerned about what God would say, a whole lot of things would not be done. If we were more concerned about what God says, a whole lot of things would not be said. A whole lot of places would not be attended. There's some things that would not be around if we were concerned with what God says. David's servants were humiliated by the evil treatment they received. They were doing the right thing and were punished for their actions. When David heard of it, he allowed them to stay in hiding until their beards had grown back. They would not have to suffer shame before their own people. When God's people are attacked by the wicked one, he is always there. He knows when we are shamed and hurt. He knows what affects us. He knows how it affects us and just what to do about it. Don't feel that your defeats go unnoticed. Don't think that your failings are only known to you and yours because God still sits high and looks low. He still hears our cry. He still knows my pain. He still listens to my prayer. He'll still comfort me and he will come down because I'm more than a conqueror. The Bible tells us that in verses 6 and 7 of that same First Chronicles, that Hanan, the son of Nahash, after he had humiliated David's servants, he took some silver and hired some mercenaries so they could go and fight against Israel. And when I get down to verse number 8, the Bible says, and when David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the hosts of the mighty men. And the children of Ammon came out and put the battle in array before the gate of the city. And the kings that would come were by themselves in the field. Now when Joab saw that the battle was set against him before and behind, he chose out of all the choice of Israel and put them array against the Syrians. So they, they got people in front of them and they got people behind them. And they can't really fight on two fronts. So Joab, the, the general, he chose out some men. All right? And he put them under his brother's command. Uh, verse number 11. The rest of the people he delivered unto the hand of Abishai, his brother. And they set themselves in array against the children of Ammon. And he said, if the Syrians be too strong for me, then thou shalt help me. But if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, then I will help thee. In your mind's eye, can you see what's going on? There's, there, there, there's Syrians on this side and there's Ammonites on this side. And the Israel's in the middle. And so Joab said, I'll take some choice men and I'll go fight the Syrians. And you go and fight the Ammonites. And if you lose it, call me and I'll come help you. But if I get overwhelmed, I'm going to call you. And you come and help me. And verse number, verse number 13, be of good courage. And let us behave ourselves valiantly for our people and for our cities of our God for and let the Lord do what is good in his sight. Amen. We're going to do what the Lord wants and let the Lord do what's good in his sight. 
I like verse 12. That's so what Joab said ought to reflect the mentality of every child of God. If you need help, I'll help you. But if I need help, you come and help me. It's much easier to be brave when you know you got help. Help will help, will help, will help, will your, your courage grow. It's when we face different trials and tests, we need help. Some, some things we face, we feel confident of surviving. Others seem to overwhelm us. Whichever is yours, it's good to know that if your problem overwhelms you, there's help. Right. If you can't make it on your own, there's help. Right. If you start out fine and falter along the way, there's help. Right. If you cry out, if you cry over it, there's help. When you don't know what to do about it, there's help. Right. Often we don't recognize it, but there is help. Sometimes we think we're in it all by ourselves. Songwriter said, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Amen. But see, when you got the Lord on your side, you got some help, and you are more than a conqueror. Amen. No matter what the problem, no matter who the enemies, we can't help God, but God will certainly show up and help us. There was help for Israel. There was help for Paul. There was help for the early church. And there's help for me. Amen. I'm more than a conqueror. Yes, sir. He is trusting God. If we believe God, we will trust that he knows what to do. If you know that it is God who's in charge of the outcome, it's going to be his will. I know. I've been there. I have doubted, I have wondered, and I have worried. I have hoped for the best, but had to fully expect the worst. I did not remind myself that whatever happened would be either God ordained or God allowed. But either way, God is in control. Amen. Many a time. I have sweated and fretted over a situation that I could not control. Uh -huh. And few, being honest here, few out of times that I said like Joab, let God do what is good in his sight. Right. The good I enjoy is a blessing. The bad I endure is a test. I'm starting to realize I don't control anything. Right. Some have proudly proclaimed, if you're going to worry, don't pray. Uh -huh. And if you're going to pray, don't worry. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. <laughs> we can't help but worry. Right. Worry comes just like inhaling and exhaling. Isn't that right? You don't be intending to worry. It just comes up on you. Even, even when you pray, you still worry. Storming out there, can't reach your loved one. They ain't home yet. Should have been home an hour ago. You praying and praying and praying. But you don't go sit down and watch it. Well, I gave it up to the Lord. You don't need me worried about it. No, no, no. That's not how we made. I know it's in God's hands. I know he's in charge. But we are wired to worry. It's in our nature to worry. We can't help but worry. Even when we don't know it, we worry. Sometimes worry wakes us up out of our sleep. Yes, Sometimes worry makes our mind wander. Uh -huh. Sometimes worry steals our appetite, right. robs us of our rest. Right. 
Sometimes worry shows on our face. Sometimes worry wreaks havoc with our bodies and shortens our temper and crushes our countenance and saps our energy. I would never say don't worry. But what I will say is this, that every time you come through something, your worry should lessen and your prayer should increase. Prayer should be associated with worry like a scratch to an itch. You don't even have to think when you have an itch to go in and scratch it. If your arms start itching, you don't even have to break your sentence. You just start scratching it because itches require scratch. Worry requires prayer. Some bothering you, your next thought ought to be, kind Heavenly Father, we come to thee at this hour Amen. with sadness in our hearts. Somebody give you some news that doesn't sit quite right. You ought to say, Father in heaven, some tells you that you are in trouble. You ought to say, dear most righteous, God our Father, yes, prayer ought to be attached to worry as reflective as a scratch to an itch. Amen. When you worry, start praying. Because when you're itching, you're going to start scratching. Yeah, and, and, and if you can't get it, oh my gosh. Look at the, look at the, the gyrations we go through to find something that Yeah. 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 People will grab an ink pen and don't know they put marks on their back, but they got to get. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make an association here because everybody on this planet has got something to worry about. They might not tell you. They might not look it. Right? They may be smiling, shaking your hands. How you doing? They got worries. But that's what I want you to do. I want you to leave here today encouraged. I am a conqueror. I'm more than a conqueror. Prayer ought to be available and ought to be automatic. For every deliverance, there ought to be more proof that God won't leave you, forsake you, or forget you. It never gets too hot for God. It never gets too complicated for God. There's never too much drama for God. It's never too dangerous for God. The problem is never too large for God. And nothing is ever new to God. You can't surprise him, shock him, confuse him, frighten him, overwhelm him, or gross him out. So in the same sentiment of Joab, let us be valiant in the service of our God and let him do what he sees fit. Because God always wins. Amen. We are more than conquerors. No matter the enemy, God helps his people. This message is designed to strengthen your faith. No matter the issue, we need to know that God cares. Embarrassment, being misunderstood, enemies joining forces, or even open and unprovoked attack, God knows and God cares. If we give it over to him and lean on him with our faith, he will come through. And I know I've got some witnesses in here where the Lord has come through. We've got some experience with God. He has come through. So when I look in the Bible and get some evidence, and I look in my life, and I got experience, there's nowhere for me to turn but to God. This episode in the history of Israel 
gives us a clear picture of the God we serve. When we know how God based his actions, his prior actions, we can trust God to do the same thing now. Because he's the same God. James said in James 1, 17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, right. with whom is no variableness, right. neither shadow of turning. Mm -hmm. If God said up is the law, up will always be the law. Right. Down will never be the law, because God don't change. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Right. Listen to what Paul says in Hebrews 13 and 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. If he loved us yesterday, uh -huh. he loves us today, Amen. and whatever happens, he gonna love me forevermore. Amen. Their faith in God gave them confidence that the victory would come. We too serve the same God. And no matter the problem, our victory will come. Right. We are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us. We don't just win with our faith. We grow stronger. We don't just conquer. We're more than conquerors. When we conquer, we grow closer. When we conquer, our testimony grows. When we conquer, we trust God harder. When we conquer, we show it. And all the glory belongs to him. We're more than conquerors. Even if I'm losing the battle, I'm going to win the war because I'm more than a conqueror. Amen. Yeah, you may knock me down six times, and six times I'm getting back up. Why? Because I'm more than a conqueror through him that loves us. Amen. Not because I'm so big and bad, but be through him that loves us. And so I got to wonder, is he still going to love me? And, and Paul said, he's still going to love you. He's going to love you just like he loved you yesterday. Right. He's going to love you tomorrow just like he loved you today. Because right. he doesn't change. Amen. But so you won't worry about your standing with God. Right. Paul assures us that we are safely tucked away in the precious love of God. Yeah. It's because of God's love for the world. That he gave his only son to die for our sins. I don't know why God loved us. Jesus gave his life on that old rugged cross because he loved us. I don't know why Jesus loved me. I don't know why he cared. I don't know why he sacrificed his life. But I'm glad. I'm glad he did. That love will save you. If you obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, right. if you decide you want to be saved, that love that took Jesus to the cross is the same love that will save you. Amen. Because Paul tells the Romans that God commended his love toward us that while we were yet sinners, not in case we sinned, we was already sinning. So Paul says, I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, right. which is in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Unemployment won't separate me. Family feuds won't separate me. Poverty won't separate me. Sickness won't separate me. Rejection won't separate me. Gossip won't separate me. Lies won't separate me. Being mistreated won't separate me. Scandals won't separate me. Bad habits won't separate me. Bad language won't separate me. A
bad marriage won't separate me. Bad kids won't separate me. Success won't separate me. Rejection won't separate me. Being a lad and talked about ain't going to separate me. Being up sometimes and down sometimes is not going to separate me from the love of God. That's in Christ Jesus. And because I know what the Bible says, because I know what the Bible teaches, I get mad at myself. Like why in the world are you letting the devil do you like that? You are more than a conqueror. Amen. I'm not saying I ain't no punk. I get scared. Yeah, yeah, I, I get scared sometimes. But guess what? Paul said, if God, if God is for me, who you got? Who, who you got? Somebody here. Somebody here need to know that God is with them. And he don't miss nothing. One thing you'll never have hear God say is, what you say? He got it the first time. Mm -hmm. He heard it the first time. Somebody needs to know. God loves you. Amen. He do. He loves you. Don't matter what you did. Don't matter where you've been. Don't matter how you acted. Right. Or are acting. He still loves you. That's right. And you need to know something. There is nothing you can do to make God love you more. Amen. There's nothing you can do to make him love. He still love you. He loved those guys out there in the street acting a fool. He love them. Just because you come to church and you put $5 in the collection, that don't mean he love you more. Right. Right. Do y'all get this? This is an unconditional love. And he said, you don't know what's in store for you. So you need to come on my side so I can protect you. Because sin is out there and it's dangerous. Amen. So no. It's bigger yeah. than what you could ever imagine. Uh -huh. I'm going to keep breaking. It, it's just like mind blown. Just to think about something that gets God's undivided attention right. makes him move Amen. and can't nobody fix but Jesus. Right. Amen. Sin is bigger than Adolf Hitler. Yes. Sin is bigger than planes going into the Twin Towers. Right. Sin is bigger than you cussing your boss out under your breath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Because if you cuss him out out loud, that means he ain't your boss no more. Amen. <clears throat> amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Sin is bigger than that. Yeah. Jesus didn't die on the cross because you went crazy with road rage or somebody cut you off. That wasn't what it was about. It was about whew, everybody that ever lived in any place at any time from Adam on down. Amen. That's what Jesus died for. That's right. That's some real live stuff. That's right. I, I, I want you to think about that. How much did he love me to die for little old me? And I ain't even worth it. Right. But because he did, I can be on his side. That's right. And when I get on his side, we ain't losing. No, 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 no. we ain't losing. We're going to win. That's right. And just like in any fight, 
you might get a hit in the mouth. Right. You can still win the fight. Yes, sir. You may come away with a bloody nose, uh -huh. but you can still win the fight. Right. Isn't that all right, huh? Somebody in here had some fat lips, some bloody noses, some black eyes, but the Bible tells me I'm more. So all I can say is, hey, come on with it. I ain't going nowhere. Why? Because I'm more. The Lord is on my side. Right. If you want the Lord on your side, you got to get on the Lord's side. Right. Isn't that all right? Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the army will give you shoes, socks, right. pants, shirt, right. underwear, yep. hat, medical yep. benefits, yep haircut, yep. food, and any medicine you need. Right. But you got to get on their side. Right. You got to, got to join up. Right. They don't just go grab folk off the street and say, you look like you need a new uniform. Let me give you one. No, 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 no. Nope. No, you got, to, you got to join up. Right. Our uniforms is for our people. Right. Our food is for our people. Right. Our benefits is for our people. Are y'all getting this message? God got some stuff for his people. Right. You want to be one of the Lord's children? You ought to get on the Lord's side. Right. You ought to believe Jesus is the son of God. Amen. And then announce it. I believe Jesus is the Christ, son of the living God. And when you do that, we'll baptize you. And the Lord will add you to his church. What a perfect plan. What a perfect plan. Amen. He didn't leave it to man so man will mess it up. Right. I didn't tell you to add over there. I told you to add to my church. Never, never, never mind. I'll do it. When the Lord adds you, there ain't going to be no mistakes. That's right. There ain't going to be in the wrong place. There ain't going to be an error or a mix up at the front office. The Lord is going to add you Amen. to his church. That's right. Man will mess it up. He sure will. Man will mess it up. That's right. Anytime man put his hands on something, mess it up. you better check it. You better check it. A couple of months ago, I bought, my wife wanted a new refrigerator. And I bought a new refrigerator. I went online, ordered the thing, had the receipt, part number. When the man came to bring it, the picture on the box was not what I ordered. Okay? They had the two doors, and hers only had the one big door. So I said, no, no, that ain't it. Take it back. That ain't it. Right. Got the wrong one. So he took it back. Customer service called me. Was there a problem with the delivery? Yeah, they delivered the wrong thing. That's not what I ordered. So we'll, we'll correct it, and we'll send out another. Another truck came out, the same box. Man. And I, I was standing out in the street. When he was giving I said, oh, no, 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 no. You might as well not even take that off the truck, because that ain't it. Anytime man put his hand, so I said, I said, what's the part number on this refrigerator? Mm -hmm. And he read me the part number, and I had my receipt, and it had the right part number. But the picture on the box was not the right picture. Right. And so he opened it up. And it was what I ordered. Wow. Why are you telling me this, preacher? I'm telling you that even when man gets it almost right, he can still mess it up. Right. Now, the one I sent back could have been the right one in the first place. Right. But just had the wrong Don't rely on man. You need to get on the Lord's side. Right. If you want to be saved, 
you need to be baptized. If you need prayer, now's your time. We're going to sing the song of encouragement. I want something uplifting, Brother Buford. I want, I want, I want something they can clap their hands to. I want them to be excited. Why? Because I'm more than a conqueror. Yeah, yeah. I know whose side I'm on, and I know who's on my side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was growing up running around these little streets, every now and then some of the little bad boys roll up on you talking about who you with. Y'all y'all know what that mean, right? Yeah, now I want you to know who I'm with. I'm with Jesus. Who, who you with? I, I'm with the Lord. That's who I'm with. Who you represent? I represent for the Lord. Somebody need to come to Jesus now. Why don't you do that? Right now while we're together, stand and while we sing. When the Savior calls, I will answer. When he calls for me, I will hear. Oh, when the Savior calls, I will answer. Is there somebody who wants to be, be saved somewhere today? Oh, listening for my Is there somebody who wants to be baptized for the forgiveness oh, of their sins? I'll be somewhere. You need to come to Jesus right now. Be somewhere. You need to come oh, and get your, get yourself right with the Lord. Get on the Lord's side. He never loses. Oh, I'll be somewhere listening. Somewhere. Oh, listening. I'll be somewhere. Why don't you come? Oh, listening for my name. Now, if my heart is right when he called me, if my heart is that one who will come? Is right. I will hear thou if my heart is right when he calls me I'll be somewhere listening for my name oh I'll be somewhere listening somewhere oh listening I'll be somewhere a listening for my name oh i'll be somewhere listening somewhere oh listening i'll be somewhere oh listening for my name all right we have a number of requests uh sister banks Sister Knowlton is asking for prayer for traveling grace. Sister Gwen Gordon is asking for prayers for forgiveness of sin and to deal with a difficult challenge, asking for prayer for her and her household and her son, Alexander. Uh, Sister Elaine Buckhalter is asking for prayer for travel, also for Sister Sandra Jenkins, uh, who's back at home, thank God. Um, for her son, she's asking for travel. Is that right? Travel grace for her son, right, okay. All right. Uh, Brother Oaks is asking for prayers for the health of Tamita Wilson and her mother, Joyce Hazel Wilson. Certainly want to pray for them. Sister Linda Thompson 
It was asked in prayer for continued prayer for her improved breathing. Amen. Amen. Um, Sister Deidre Smith is asking prayer for traveling grace and uh well, she's on vacation, so you ask her for prayers that she have safe travel. Uh, Sister Edith Sally is thanking the church for their prayers. Uh, she's blessed. She's uh, healing well. And she wants she want everybody to continue to pray for her. Uh, Sister Roche Johnson is requesting prayer uh, for traveling grace. She's going to see her mother. Also, prayers are being requested for Brother Elroy Leach. Uh, he's about having a state, having a bout with cancer. I certainly want uh, to remember him in our prayers. Uh, also, um, uh, pray for the Walkers. We'll be traveling uh, on next Sunday, so uh, please pray for us to have uh, safe travels. Um, and it's getting ready to be vacation time. There's a lot of people going to be taking off, going different places for vacations and whatnot, uh, weddings and graduations and things of that nature. So, so we're going to see a lot of people traveling, and we certainly want to remember all the travelers so that they'll be able to go to their destination and return without danger. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for blessing us with the privilege of prayer. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for helping us. We thank you for all the things that you've already done for us. That's right. Father, we ask if it's your will that you would please bless those who have made their request this morning. Pray that you would bless those who are sick and recovering. Help them, Father, on their road to recovery if it's your will. We pray your blessings on those who are away from us. We ask that you would please... Protect them on their journey. Amen. Help them, Father, to be able to return to us safely. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've already done. We yes. pray your blessing on those who have heard your word and decided not to move yet. Pray that you would give them time to make up their mind to come and be in your family as right. your child. Thank you, Father. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Also, giving you announcements. Uh, Saturday is Trinity Walker's birthday. Okay. All right, and we want to congratulate uh, Miss Trinity. Uh, the sisters' class today, after morning worship, Tamar will be the topic. So we encourage you to stay for that. Uh, Sister Walker is requesting donations of wrapped candy and treats for our children's Easter bags next Sunday, March 24th. So if you want to contribute to the children for their Easter bag, uh, please bring those wrapped treats uh, next Sunday. Uh, Sister Knowlton wants to meet with the uh, seniors um, in, in uh, class number two right after sister's class. Not after sir, but after sister's class. Okay. Um, the homeless committee wants to thank Maypole for their support. They were able to serve 80 people on yesterday. Amen. Amen. We thank God for that effort. Uh, brothers, there's a breakfast schedule for this Saturday at 11 a.m. Saturday the 23rd at 11 a.m. So we look forward to seeing you guys there. Um, the mini medical program of North Lawndale uh, is free to fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. Classes are held one Saturday in the month of January through June. Information is on the bulletin board. Uh, we want to thank the mentors and parents who uh, accompanied the gyms yesterday. Uh, they went to 
uh, what turned out to be Evanston Township. It started out with Northwestern, but that apparently was uh, not the right information, whether it was moved or not. But uh, we thank those who came out and, 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 and exposed our girls to uh, those workshops. Um, next Sunday, North Shore Church of Christ will be installing their new minister, Brother Brooks Griffin. <coughs> Excuse me, Brother Jonathan Johnson is part of that, uh, that installation program, and so we'd be prayerful uh, for his efforts uh, in that behalf. Um, the CYDC Easter Tournament will have a $500 scholarship in memory of Sister Andrea Bobo. Uh, Sunday, March 24th, the tournament begins March 30th. So if you want to uh, be involved, see the information on the bulletin board. It has the address and the times uh, and whatnot. Uh, Far West Church of Christ presents a March Madness Revival fundraiser and bake sale. Uh, Brother Conley Gibbs, Jr. of St. Louis will be the guest speaker uh, Sunday, March 24th at 10 a.m. That's next Sunday, and then Monday through Wednesday at 7 p.m. nightly. Um, Sunday after morning service and Monday through Wednesday, fundraising meals and bake sale, all right? Um, the national lectureship will be in Montgomery, Alabama, March 30th through April 4th, uh, for those who may be interested in attending. Uh, 87th Street Ladies' Day is April 6th, the theme, Deliver Me. Uh, guest speaker, Sister Yolanda Wicks, and our very own Sister Tashiana Johnson. So that information is also on the bulletin board and we, uh, they're looking for our support on that day. Uh, April 6th, uh, Chicago Heights Church of Christ will be honoring their minister and his wife, brother and sister Jenkins. Um, Saturday of the 6th and Sunday the 7th. Uh, on the 14th of April, you're invited to the Robins Annuals Ladies' Day, entitled Bad Girls. Okay. Blessed and delivered. That's what. Anyway. <laughs> Again, information is on uh, the bulletin board. The National Teachers Workshop is April 18th through the 20th. Information once more is on the bulletin board, and finally, the uh, Midwest Youth Conference. Uh, coming in June, it's gonna be held on the campus of Bowling Green State University in, in Ohio. So all this information is on the bulletin board out, out in the lobby. Uh, we encourage you to uh, stop by and get all the information that you need, dates, times, addresses, and things of that nature. Um, that being said, uh, let us together stand as we are dismissed.